Fast measurement of distances became a critical technology because it enables, together with artificial intelligence, autonomous movements of cars or planes. Today we will get an overview and compare readily available devices for makers. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. We all know that Google and other companies use laser LiDAR systems on the roof of their cars. These are multi-thousand dollar machines and not reachable for an ordinary maker. More than a year ago, in video number 119, I got a tiny chip which measured the distances up to one meter using laser light. It introduced me to the term time of flight, a miracle in my opinion. However, I'm too fast. Let's first get an overview. The simplest way of measuring distances with light is to measure the intensity of the reflected beam. Such sensors output an analog signal and you can find the distance with this curve. They are not very accurate and can be disturbed by any source of infrared light. If you mount one of those on a servo, you get a reasonable obstacle avoidance device for under $10. To measure distances already, the old Greeks used triangulation, and all sailors used it to find their positions. For our purpose, we send a light beam towards an object. The angle of the reflected beam depends on the distance between the object and our sensor. If we project this beam on a one-dimensional camera, we can calculate the range according to the place the camera sees the reflected beam. I have no such sensor in my lab and therefore will not cover it in this video. A second technology is also known for a while. Measuring phases of waves. Each frequency has a defined wavelength and you can determine a distance based on the phase shift of a reflected signal. The last method is to measure the time a wave needs to travel a distance. We know this principle since our childhood. When we saw lightning, we started to count 21, 22, 23 and stopped when we heard the thunder. We multiplied the seconds with 300 meters and got our distance to the lightning. Why did this work? Because sound travels around 300 meters per second in air. Light moves much faster, 300,000 kilometers per second which was, at that days, indefinitely fast. So we saw the lightning immediately and heard the thunder with the delay of the distance. We use a similar principle with our ultrasonic sensors, just without thunder. A loudspeaker sends a tone and the device starts to count. As soon as the reflected sound hits our microphone, the counter stops. Again, we can multiply this time by 300 meters and get the distance. Simple. Some crazy engineers had the idea to do the same thing with light. The advantage would be a minimum angle of measurement of a few degrees. And if we use laser light, we can measure longer distances with quite low power. And your dog is not disturbed by high frequency sound. So let's summarize the different possibilities. For unprecise measurements, we can measure the intensity of the reflected light. Below 10 meters distance, we can use triangulation with light. It is cheap and accurate. In the range till 100 meters, we can measure phase shift. It has low manufacturing cost, but it is slow. Above 100 meters, and if we need fast measurements, we have to measure the time of flight of laser light. This is extremely fast and, until now, the most expensive method. Let's look at the phase shift method. It is widely used in the ordinary rangefinders, also in the one I used in video number 198. These devices have a laser diode which they modulate with a frequency of, let's say, 10 MHz. The sinus curve of this signal looks like that. Its wavelength is 30 meters. Let's assume we add a reflected signal which traveled 7.5 meters. This signal will be smaller and 25% late. 
if we were able to detect this phase difference, we would be able to measure distance. Let's assume we can distinguish a 1 degree phase difference. Then we would be able to detect differences of 30 meters divided by 360, which is around 8 centimeters. And the maximum distance we would be able to measure is 30 meters. After the 30 meters, the wave starts again and we do not know if we are between 0 and 30 or between 30 and 60 meters. The measured phase would be the same. This is already a reasonable system. A lower frequency would increase the range and decrease the accuracy, and a higher frequency the contrary. However, this cheap rangefinder from China can measure 40 meters with a precision of a few millimeters. How come? The device uses first a low frequency, let's assume 10 MHz, to decide which approximate distance the target is. Then it increases the frequency, let's say to 100 MHz, and measures again. Now the wavelength is only 3 meters and it can measure with an accuracy of 0.8 cm. Let's assume during the second measurement it detects a phase shift of 50 degrees. Then the distance could be 40 cm, 3 meters and 40 cm, 6 meters and 40 cm, 9 meters and 40 cm and so forth. Because we know that it has to be around 7.5 meters, we know it is exactly 6 meters and 40 centimeters, because this is the closest multiple of 40 centimeters. This is precisely how these rangefinders work. As you see here on the oscilloscope, they send a few signals with increasing or decreasing frequencies and do the measurements and calculations mentioned before. This can be done with cheap components because we do not need to deal with picoseconds and still get high accuracy. Unfortunately, this principle is rather slow. My device had a minimum measuring time of 300 milliseconds. But for those handheld devices, this is okay. By the way, for my German-speaking viewers, I leave a link to a video where this principle is demonstrated. Now to the supreme discipline measuring the time of flight. Here we use a so-called time to digital converter. It has to be able to measure very short times as you see in the chart taken from the application note of the TDC-GP22. This chip has a basic accuracy of 90 picoseconds in which light travels around 10 millimeters. Incredible! The block diagram shows how a device works. A microcontroller pulses a laser diode which sends a laser beam towards the target. A part of this light is reflected directly to a detector which stops the first counter, which is used as a reference. The rest of the beam travels to the target and back and is detected by a fast and very sensitive photodiode. Its signal stops the second counter and the chip can calculate the distance. I have two of these modules here, the TF Mini, which only uses an LED and not a laser diode, and it has a specified range of 12 meters. The second is from Garmin and uses a laser diode. Its specified range is 40 meters. The TF Mini costs around $40 and the Garmin around $150, including shipping. Not exactly cheap devices. So let's test them. I use for both a ready-made library to avoid reading the manuals. Like that, I'm not sure if the configuration used for this test is the best available. But it is how most of us would do. And this is what counts on this channel. After my disappointment with my last laser rangefinder, I'm a little skeptical for the maximum distances. Again, I use our big garage as a test location. Like that, we have no sunlight, but the reflection of the walls is also not ideal. Grey concrete. Let's start with a distance of about 1 meter. A remark at the beginning. I'm not interested in the absolute precision of the measurements, also because I'm not equipped to do such analysis. I use the rangefinder as a reference. It shows 1 meter. 
The Garmin does not give a precise reading, it fluctuates quite a bit, and stochastically it displays a completely wrong result. I did not find out why this happens, but because it is far off, it would be easy to remove it. The TF Mini shows a constant value of 96 cm. The 3 cm can be attributed to the difference in the reference plane between the rangefinder and the TF Mini. I did not adjust it properly. The next stop is at 5 meters. The Garmin still creates variable results and the TF Mini very stable ones. They seem to be a few centimeters short. At 7 meters the TF Mini has a little signal strength and stops to display results. If I install a styrofoam sheet in front of the grey wall, the TF Mini displays the distance. The reflection of the white layer is better than the one of the grey concrete. It also works at 10 meters, but at around 11 meters it stops. So it nearly reaches the specified range. Good. Because these LiDAR sensors do not emit any visible light, I had to add a red laser diode to my setup. Like that, I can aim much better. What about the Garmin? It still works at 22 meters, at 30 meters, and it displays sporadic results at 40 meters. Also here, the specifications are met. Under good conditions, of course, with a white surface and low ambient light. As we saw, a grey target can reduce the reach to nearly half. By the way, the Garmin has to be calibrated every 100 measurements. This is built into the code and runs completely automatic. Next, I'm interested in the speed. The specifications of the TF Mini say 100 Hz and we measure 8.8 .8 milliseconds for one measurement, which is ok. The Garmin needs 3.6 milliseconds for its measurement, which is around the specified 270 Hz. So both reach the specified values. A newer version of the Garmin LiDAR should be faster and need less power, but it is also more expensive. The LiDAR sensors are not only made for situations as I tested, they are also made for rotating devices. This is why I started to print some parts for my TF Mini for a 360 degrees rotational LiDAR. But because I got a ready-made 360 degrees LiDAR, I stopped this project and will mount the TF Mini or the Sharp sensor onto a servo. You see the results in this chart. It detects obstacles in an angle of up to 180 degrees. Like that, I can now replace the three ultrasonic sensors on my robot with one LiDAR. And it has a longer range, which can be important for this application if your device moves fast. And because I can turn the robot on the spot, I even do not need a 360 degrees LiDAR. If I want to look back, I just turn the whole robot. A viewer wrote a library to use a stepper motor instead of a servo which is probably a more reliable way. You find a link to this sketch in the description. Summarized, we know now at least four different methods to measure distance using light. Measuring the signal strength of the reflected light beam works fine on short distances. It is cheap but not very accurate. It is a good solution for slow robots. Triangulation is good for short distances. It is fast and precise but I did not find a ready-made sensor which uses this method. Face detection is widely used for the handheld rangefinders. It is very precise for distances below 100 meters, but because it has to perform a few consecutive measurements to get accurate distances, it is quite slow and not useful to build LiDAR systems. Measuring time of flight is the newest technology. It became cheaper and we already get small and cheap sensors like the VL53LOX. This chip works up to about 1 meter and is quite slow, so it cannot be used for a LiDAR. The newer VL53L1X should double the range and increase the sampling speed to 50 Hz. This could become a good solution for short-range LiDARs if the pricing is okay.
So far, I did not see any breakout boards using this chip. The TF Mini is located between the cheaper, very short range chips and the expensive Garmin device. It fits when you need exact distances in a fast pace. It is also much smaller than the Garmin. It could be a good replacement for ultrasonic devices where you need a waterproof solution, for example, to monitor all sorts of liquid tanks. Bigger devices like the one from Garmin covers a range of up to 40 meters. They are fast enough to be used on fast moving vehicles, but cost more than $100. If you want to secure your fast drone or if your autonomous buggy has a big engine, it is probably the right solution. If you spend even more, you get devices which already have the 360 degrees movement integrated. Fortunately, also these sensors get cheaper. I just got a brand new one which costs less than $100. But this is stuff for another video. A unique device is the long distance rangefinder, which claims to be able to measure up to 1500 meters. Do you believe that? Also stuff for another episode. You see, this technology is not cheap. This is why I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon and the viewers using the affiliate links in the description for their shopping. Without you, it would be difficult for me to do what I do now. Bye.